Hello and welcome to this, uh, it's going to be a short video on first of all fission and then fusion. Okay, so nuclear fission. Nuclear fission involves the splitting of a large nuclei into smaller nuclei. That is fission, the splitting. Uh, this happens, for example, when a neutron is absorbed by one of these large nuclei. And the main type of nuclei we use here on Earth for nuclear fission is uranium, and it's the isotope uranium-235. We also use plutonium-239, uh, but this is the main one that we use. So during the fission, the uranium splits into two daughter nuclei, and in this process, massive amounts of energy are released, huge amounts, much more than any um, chemical reaction. Now also released are two or three neutrons. And those other neutrons can go on to cause other fissions. They can become this new, uh, neutron and collide with other uh, unstable radioactive uranium. Okay, so you need to be aware of this process called a chain reaction. And you may be asked in an exam to actually understand or complete a diagram like this. So it starts with the uranium and in comes the neutron. Oops. In comes the neutron, is absorbed by the uranium. The uranium splits, energy is released and neutrons are released. Now those neutrons, they go on and are absorbed by other uraniums. Those uraniums they split, energy is released, and other neutrons are released. Each of these neutrons, they are absorbed by other uraniums. They split, releasing energy. And you can see they release the neutrons. And you can see we've very quickly gone from one fission to nine fissions. So next we'll have 27 fissions and then we'd have 81 fissions and very quickly we've got a lot of uraniums all giving out huge amounts of energy by doing fission. That's called a chain reaction because we've just one starts it and many follow. Um, we can actually slow that uh, and it is stop it by just using something to absorb those neutrons so the neutrons do not go and then um, cause more fissions, these neutrons. So in a nuclear power station, all we do to uh, control the speed of that chain reaction is use something which will absorb neutrons without doing fission. Okay, so the next type of reaction you need to be well aware of is nuclear fusion. To fuse something together is to join it together. So this is the joining together of small nuclei. For example, in this case, deuterium, which is hydrogen, but it's hydrogen with one extra uh, neutron and tritium. This is the most common uh, fusion. Uh, those two are forced together. They have to be forced together because they're both positive, so they both repel each other. So you need very high temperature and pressure. They're forced together under very high temperature and pressure and they join. They join to make helium in this case. And also released is the one spare neutron, which travels very fast. It's got very high kinetic energy. Uh, this is the process you need to be aware that by which stars release energy. Uh, and this is the process by which they make new elements inside stars, which I've talked about in another video, the life cycle of stars. Uh, 
So because of that very high temperature and pressure that's needed, it's very hard to do here on Earth. Um, we're only at the uh, experimental phase. And currently we can do the, the fusion here on Earth, but we need to put in more energy than we actually get out. So it's not yet become a useful source of energy. You may well be asked in the exam to compare fission and fusion for uses in electricity generation. All of our power stations currently use nuclear fission, so it's an established source of energy. You basically use the heat generated from the fission to heat up water to turn it into high pressure steam, drive a turbine, drive a generator. It's a very well established um, form of energy. It's a, th it's a thermal power station, like many power stations. However, fusion, as I've said, is still at the experimental phase. And currently we have no net gain of energy from fusion. We have to put in more energy than we get out from nuclear fusion. There are some advantages of fusion though, especially that fission leaves us with radioactive waste. So the fission reaction leaves us behind radioactive products. Whereas fusion, the only product is, is um, helium, which is not radioactive. So that's a good thing about fusion. Uh, also, fission is a non-renewable resource. There's only limited amounts of uranium and plutonium. Whereas the resource for fusion is hydrogen. And while there's loads of hydrogen on Earth, so if not, uh, completely renewable, it is certainly abundant. Um, so, very, very brief summary then, just remember that fission is the splitting of large nuclei into small nuclei, and that fusion is the joining of small nuclei into larger nuclei. Thank you very much for listening, I hope that helped.